Hello, Anna and Todd. We're from Kickass Photographers, which is a membership for wedding photographers. Uh, we are going to talk you through today how we took this photo of a dappled group photo at a wedding, horrendously dappled photo, to this. So if you've taken a wedding photo that is like an absolute nightmare and you're worried about how you're going to edit it, we're going to talk you through what we did. Um, and we are sat awkwardly close right now in order to fit in this little circle in the corner. So hello. I hope you guys appreciate this. <laughs> so you can see our lovely faces. Um, we edited this photo um, a year ago, so I'm not going to try to replicate it exactly, um, but I'm going to show you pretty much the steps I would go through if I was doing it now. So first of all, like, let's backtrack. This was like the hottest day in the world ever, wasn't it? It was so hot. <laughs> you can see it looks hot. Um, and the situation was tricky. It was in Oxford and the venue is on a busy street. Um, they wanted the group photo in front of the venue like this. Like I always say to my couples, do you prefer light or background? And they said background. So I was like, it's going to be in terrible light. But, you know, whatever you want, that's fine. And didn't somebody say, like, because the venue's behind them, like, everyone will just hang out in the garden before the group shot. It'll be nice and chilled. But actually, it was like a sun trap, wasn't it, in there? Yeah, so, so everyone's actually just roasting here and really wants to go inside. It was horrendous because they're <laughs> roasting while I'm standing there trying to get this, this photo, which was really hard to get. As you can see, there are these people back here trying to leave. <laughs> <laughs> they're like right okay done one shot done um and that's part of the problem like i was really struggling and i took a while over it and people did start to leave i didn't take that long over it they are impatient so these kids in the foreground they've had enough yeah they've had enough they're definitely over it these people um, here on the left are in like a black hole of shadow aren't they're, they? they're like, happy look at their happy faces well if you can see them but not visible really to the camera in this default state no and so this this shadowy guy over here is in the band wasn't he's he? a singer yeah get out my <laughs> photo dude <laughs> so we've got several problems going on here as you can see so we, you were stood out here in the street. So right? I was in the street and I didn't know until it, like till way later in the day, no one thought to tell me, these gates freaking open. They open backwards. I thought they only opened, like one of them only opened forwards, inwards, which is useless. Like you can see these spikes here, like that's the top of the gate. I really didn't think there was anything I could do about that gate. I wish someone had said, you know, it opens out into the street, right? So that would have helped me so much because I would have been able to, you know, not have the spikes and not also uh, be like towering over this massive fence and I'd be able to step back a little bit more and get people in. But this is all like classic wedding, isn't it? Yeah. Where you just... have to do the, the group shot under duress and you've got no time to think about stuff, no time to organise things. Yeah. You've it's... just got to do it. It's very stressful. <laughs> um, so as you can see, I'm, I'm dealing with this spiky fence and um, that's in the way and I couldn't really go any higher. Um, and actually you'll see in this reference photo where I got my um, Photoshop my couple from you can see the spikes This is this is the first photo I took like uh, this is what I'm working with and I was like well I'm gonna need to do better than that. So That's I had to get even spikes. higher. It's a lot of spikes um, And of course the terrible terrible light so, so are, like number one disclaimer the better you can get something looking in camera the less you're gonna have to do this in your shots so like the ideal thing is you would line everybody up neatly control the background like straight in the camera and you wouldn't even have to do this 99% of my group photos are like that it's not always possible is it's it? it's not and I'm sure we've all had that moment where the couple's like I want a photo in front of the church or in front of the venue and you're like oh no the sun the Zorks. shade like yeah <laughs> it's so scary and stressful so like sometimes you just got to take the shot so my two tips here would be take loads of photos and if you can't fit them in this is a 24 as you can see up here 24 if you can't fit all the people in like take three shots, left, middle and right. And if you have to stitch them together, you have to. Um, I, I didn't have, <laughs> I don't think I had all the people on the right here. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I couldn't see. I was holding the camera up so high above my head to get over the fence and the sun was so, so bright in my face. I couldn't see what I was getting and what I wasn't getting. So I'm gonna forgive myself here. Um, like lesson learned, just, just spray and pray as they say um i've now discovered there's a sunshine brightness button on my uh, like on my on my sony where you can actually it makes the screen brighter so you can see in the sun this was like one of our earliest sony weddings wasn't it it so was I didn't even know the menus then exactly so let's get stuck into this photo oh, my other tip i was going to say is um shoot for the highlights so at least you're not losing detail because digital photos digital cameras do recover highlights really really well uh, sorry so, yeah, shadows it's... not highlights they recover shadows well so if i 
was to lift this. You can see these people really well there. So that's what we want to be doing. So if the highlights thing here had gone, if these guys' shirts and stuff that are white had clipped here in the right-hand side, you could turn that on by clicking that triangle. If that had gone to pure white, that would be it. Goodbye, guys in white shirts. Goodbye, detail. So you want to make sure that nothing is spilling over the right-hand edge of your histogram here. Yeah, so if in doubt, just underexpose the photo a little bit. If you're, if you're shooting in bright sunlight with some dappled light, you want to underexpose it just to make sure you get all the detail in. And it's just worth saying uh, that you shot this at f11 to make sure you covered everyone with the depth of field there. Yeah, I probably wouldn't shoot. I mean, I think because I was quite close to them, I did that. If I was further away and they were more spread out side to side, I wouldn't shoot f11. Um, but yeah, I had quite a lot of depth going on here, so I had to. Um, so I'm going to start with, um, we use a preset um, that we've tweaked ourselves. So this is giving it a little bit of punch, a bit of colour. So that's what we are starting from. That's our starting so point. if anyone's into this preset, look, the starting point that we used is the two-man develop. Yes. The latest one. Exactly. And we did some sort of tweaking. I'm not sure exactly what. I think we made it more, more punchy and more vibrant. Um, you can also turn it up. Whoa. Um, but that's not what we're doing today. What we're going to do here today is fix this disastrous group photo. I'm, I, I, I mean, I, I've, we've, we've edited this photo already and already delivered it a year ago, and I'm still a little bit overwhelmed and scared still to do this. Still sweating with nerves. I'm still sweating. I think what I'm going to start with is I might try. Oh, the shadows are pretty high already. I might try just a bit of this already. There we go. It's already improved it a bit. And I might go for a gradient. So I'm going to lift a bit of exposure and a bit of shadows there. I'm going to pull it from the left. Okay, that's already helped quite a lot. I don't want the highlights much brighter than that, so I'm going to bring the shadows up even more. I didn't do that much, so let's see how far we can push that. To equal the other side a bit. There we go. So what I like to do when I have pulled up the exposure and I've pulled up the shadows like that, I'll pull up the contrast to like 10%, something like that just to bring a little bit of contrast back in there because you're you're flattening it out a tiny bit when you um, pull everything up like that. There we go. So just whack a little bit of contrast Lovely. in there. Lovely, nice tip. Uh, now I'm gonna make a new um, mask and I might do some brushing because I feel like the people in the middle haven't really benefited from my lightening there. So I will not increase the exposure just now because it might affect the highlights here, but I'm going to bring up the shadows. Let's do it a lot so we can see exactly what we're doing. It's on this couple's face. And it's not doing that much. Let's lift up the exposure as well. There we go. I'm going to bring down the highlights. And keep painting these guys in with this brush. All these sorts of darker areas. There we go. Um, I might also add to these guys here a little bit. Because that's very dark in that corner. There we go. I'm just going to brush over their faces. These guys are now a little bit dark compared um, so I might turn that down a bit, this gradient here, I might turn it down just a touch, just a little bit, just to keep it even. Now the people in the middle at the back are really quite bright compared to everything else, so I'm going to do another brush and I'm going to make them a little bit darker, just back here with all their bright white shirts. I'll turn down the highlights a little bit. There we go, they're a little bit evened out now. So how are we looking compared to... Oops, the edited version. Not bad. I am going to straighten that up. That's annoying that it doesn't match when I uh, go to it. Look at that. Actually quite like our new edit. Better than last year's edit. <laughs> yeah, it looks like you, you lightened the couple more this time. I did, didn't I? Okay, that was pretty easy. That was pretty good. Uh, my new problem is this couple who have disappeared and the band member. Um, so that really annoys me they weren't facing the right way. So I've got this old photo here with them looking good. Um, this is an edited version um, because I needed to edit it the exact same way in order to have the same edit on this couple. So what I did was, once I'm absolutely sure I'm ready, let's move our faces up. Once I'm absolutely sure I'm ready with my new edit, I'm going to select both of those, right click them, Edit in Photoshop. There's always someone looking the wrong way. There's, I mean, there's a, there's a million blinkers in that photo. I can't be bothered to deal with that, but these people walking away. It was the best shot I had for the spikes of the railings. It was the best shot I had of the couple. So, um, yeah, 
I, I had to go with the one where they were walking away, unfortunately. Come back. Come back! Stop! I mean, if you can see me still taking photos, why are you turning around? Um, so what I'm going to do... Should we try the uh, the content aware fill and just see what it does? Oh! Well, what I want to... I want to use this... If I do that, it'll give them new faces entirely. I mean, on the, on the band, dude. Oh, good idea. Right. Let's just for a laugh try it out so this is the one we're working on isn't it so if we go to would you use the square or would you use something else uh, try it okay let's not lose his legs I don't need to lose that guy behind unless I can actually do you know what I'm going to I'm going to draw around him just to get the whole dude in now Photoshop AI is quite fun what should we say remove this man and replace with background background should I put content aware background do you think it would understand uh, that? I'll just, let's try that let's shall see we? what happens so Photoshop AI is hilarious it just um, someone said they wanted to remove some rings in the registrar's hand and it put berries in in its place <laughs> So, yeah, Photoshop Content Aware in July 2023 is doing some weird things. It's also doing some really cool things. I've replaced faces of some scouts um, when I've done summer camp with scouts where they couldn't be in photos. Um, so it's brilliant for that. And look at that. The guy's gone. That's pretty good, to be fair. That is good. There's some, like, shadow or distortion there, but that, oh, I don't that care. kind That's of looks great. like the shadow of a tree or something. It is. That, that was there. Pretty sure that was already there. Oh, it was yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. Nice. That well, is... It's... it's got rid of the whole... Pillar? Wait, it's got rid of the pillar. <laughs> well, I'm guessing it was mostly cropped out of this one. I didn't tell it to. Oh. Because it's it's a tighter crop. Oh, it's not the exact same photos as this one, is it? Right, so there are also variations built into that, aren't there? So if you click yeah. those left and right arrows, <laughs> you get some, in this case, micro variations. I like that. I can get rid of that massive shadow that was there. Cool. That's cool. Right, I like that. Um... We won't get rid of this couple today. We won't go through all of that. That is a whole other video. Um, but yes, in the original, we did replace them from a different photo, this one. Um, but yeah. So I your think... method for that was copy it in from that one, paste it. And, and then, then cut around and just work some it. magic, get in there close and make them fit in. I mean, you could just think to yourself, they walked away, that's not my problem and just hope that the couple don't say anything. And if they do, then you could do something about it. Um, but I quite like a bit of Photoshopping. Uh, but yeah. Well, whilst we're here and talking about the AI generative film, mm. should we try it on someone's face? Oh, we're going to have a play? Yeah. All right. Let's pick the <laughs> bride. What should we say? Uh, hmm. Replace this face. <laughs> Oops, I made a... Let's, let's test the library of Photoshop's built-in faces. This is going to be fun. When I did it on a video, when I when I did it on a photo of the scouts um, to replace someone's face, it was hilarious. It was quite terrifying as well, a bit ghostly. One of the girls got loads of makeup um, in the AI face. <laughs> Here we go, yeah. Seamless. It looks so natural. She's even looking at the camera. Let's do the groom as well for uh, oh, to ah. make it fair. All right, let's... Let's uh, make a whole new couple. Excellent. Should we send it to them and see if they notice? <laughs> we did that once before. Do you remember we um, got a got a group photo and um, we uh, one of the the uncle was missing, an important guest was missing from the group photo, so we photoshopped him in identical from another photo, and we we even said to the couple, "Guess who we replaced?" They loved it. Do you remember they loved that game? <laughs> They had loads of fun, and they were like, "Yeah, typical." <laughs> what? Oh, it's gone for a real like art house look. Oh, I love it. I what suppose. Oh, hey, look. <laughs> He's a bit young. Kind of like, now that's a, that's a couple that look good together. <laughs> so there, we have created a whole new wedding as well. Do you think we can replace all the faces? <laughs> <laughs> that's for another video. I think. I think we'll just uh, we'll stop this and carry on and play play on our own, shall we? Um, so yeah, that is. So when you press um, save, it will basically take you back to Lightroom where you'll get given your photo. Um, and that is all you really need to do. So there you go. If you are shooting in really, really, really horrible light, don't worry about it. It's salvageable. I know as a photographer, this light looks horrendous. Like it looks like people have got like all sorts of weird patterns on their faces and it's not great as a photographer, but as, as a couple, they really, really don't care. We've got to try not to care too much about things that us as photographers care, care about and, and other people don't really care about. So 
That's probably my number one tip. Don't worry so much about that stuff. Just do as good as you can. Do as well as you can. Number two tip, come join us in the Kick-Ass Photographers membership. Yes, we have all sorts of hangouts in there. We do reviews of people's businesses. We do co-working. We do um, tea break chats. Got some educational videos and stuff in there as well. All sorts of lovely things. It's a fab community. So, yes, come hang out with us in there. Hope to see you in there. It's kickassphotographers.com forward slash join. Bye.